2022. Did you notice every day we are counting and before you know it, we will count the last day in this year and if Jesus starts, we will continue again. That is how the calibration of our life has been going and that is why we are careful to make sure we do all that we need to do each day. So I want to thank God for your life and I say good morning to you and welcome to the platform of Behold Your God. From this platform, one of the things that we do is that as we declare the word of God, we are allowing men to see God as he really is and he confirms his word. When we declare his word, the Bible says the word of God runs swiftly and I just want to give God praise for the authority of the word of God and I want to thank him for how faithful he has been to us in this place. We can't take that for granted. So we say all glory, all honor, all adoration to the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Friday. I'm so excited about it. And I'm so grateful for how the Lord has carried us all through the week, how his mercy has kept us, how his compassion has seen us the end of August. 
Did you notice August has gone, ended, never to come back again? We were all there in August. Now it has gone, and this is September, and we are thanking God that the mercy of God that kept us and preserved us all through and ushered us into a brand new month. And today, this is Friday, the 2nd of September, we are thanking God and also trusting him that the life he is giving us, that we'll be able to maximize this life. Not just living life, but fulfilling destiny, fulfilling the purpose why we are created why we are giving life i have seen some people that are towards the end of their life they are there in the sick bed in the hospital the diagnosis and the and the medical report is showing that they just have a short time to live you can see those people really regret their life i have seen majority of them they will regret say oh if only this and some of them will start sending message go and call this my daughter go and call this person i want to say this i want to say that and you mostly hear them say if only I have an opportunity. I could have done this better and done that better. Now that God has given us life, let us try all we can to do what we are supposed to do with the time God has given us. There is no opportunity that you waste that comes back again. What God does is that his grace will give you another opportunity. And there are several opportunities God will be giving people again and again, and they keep on squandering it. I always like referring to the rich fool. That's what the Bible called him, the rich fool. He was a man that was so wealthy. The Bible says that his land was bringing forth plentifully. The same land that other people have when they plant, it doesn't yield as much as this particular man. You know? And the Bible says he has so much and he was trying to you know, know what to do. He doesn't know what to do with all the abundance he had. He said, okay. I think I've come to a conclusion. What I'm going to do, I will break down this, my barn, this, my storehouse. I will build a bigger one that will contain all my goods. And I will tell my soul, soul, eat, drink. You have enough that will last you for your lifetime. And that is how the Lord called him a fool. Thou fool, your life will be demanded of you. May we be careful as we are thanking God for life. You know, thanking God for stepping into the new month. Let us also have wisdom so that God can look at us and say, this one is a fool. How can I give you all these years? Give you all these years. You have entered into the month of September. It's already counting. Today is 2nd of September. And you are not realizing the purpose. Jesus uh, gave that, disciple, uh, that parable. He said, thou fool. Tonight, your soul will be required of you. And then he asked the question, then who shall all those things be? You know what? No matter what you want to accumulate, make sure you live according to purpose. And how do you discover purpose? You know, it's not something you choose. It's something you discover. What is God's plan? Why is God giving me life? I remember uh, when I was still single, about to get married, I remember I was working at the airport then and I had so many options and I was looking at, oh, this one, that one, praying, of course, but say, watch and pray. So it was like lock, praying and still like, oh, is it this one? Is it this one? You know, when you talk about purpose and you aligning yourself to the plan of God for your life, you, and some people are just living and they are, and that is why some people suddenly hear somebody is cut short. Because if you are not living according to your purpose, if you are not living according to why God gave you life, you are not guaranteed of your tomorrow. Yes, that parable told us clearly that a man can be cut short at any time if you are not understanding why God is giving your life. So while we are thanking God for ushering us from the month of August and bringing us into the month of September. May we be careful to understand why God is giving us life and what he is expecting of us. Some people are taking the life God has given them. They are wasting it. They just feel that as if they have all the time to stay here. Your great grandfather is no longer here. He was young, young, a young man like you or a young woman like you. And they are no longer here today. And one day if Jesus tarries, you will not be here. And in case the Lord sees that you are just encumbering the gland, he will just cut off. He says suddenly somebody just died. 
because they are not fulfilling purpose. I want to assure you, if you are fulfilling purpose, the Bible says the number of your days shall be fulfilled. Don't just play, pray for long life. Don't just pray that God will uh, preserve your life. Ah, oh, you're traveling. Please pray for me. I'm traveling. Not just praying that God will preserve you in the highway, on the air, or whatever means you're using to travel. Pray that you find your assignment. Remember Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was traveling. A time came, there was a shipwreck. There were so many things that happened to him. He said it was three days in the, inside the water. I don't know how he survived it, but I tell you something. When you are pursuing purpose, there is nothing. Hey, there is nothing. As long as you have discovered this is what God has for me, this is what I am fulfilling, then you know that no matter the opposition that comes against you, it's not going to touch you. I'm praying that you discover purpose. Don't just thank God for the month of September. Ask God for grace to understand why he has given you days to live and what he is expecting of you. And that is how you can lay hold on purpose in case there are ways you need to really change. Some people last month, you know how you did, you, you handled your dealings and you need really need to come back to God and repentance where you have cheated, where you told, told lies and done some things. I tell you that in this month, God is actually requiring of you to repent. And if you insist and continue in these ways, I tell you something, your future cannot be guaranteed. I tell you, it cannot be guaranteed. So choose purpose. Choose to find out what God has for you and nothing. You know, there's this story about this woman that was pregnant. She was pregnant with her first baby. She has bought so many things for the baby. Oh, it was a very sad story. So many things have been bought. You no, know, she painted the house, changed some things, the bed sheets, the, everything was just new. And then she packed her baby's things, the ones in the house, and she carried the one that she would need for the hospital. She got to the hospital. It was a normal delivery. She gave back to her baby. And then the baby survived and this woman died. You know, we say, oh, this or that and this or that. Some things may happen to those who are not in God. But as for you, no matter what the stories you hear around, it's not supposed to come around you unless you are not working in purpose. I repeat again, you are not guaranteed of your life if you are not living in purpose. Some people that we see in September now, some of them may not see December. I pray you will not be one of them. Choose to find out why God is giving you life and fulfill that life in the name of Jesus. God bless you. <laughs> yes, you've not entered into what you have today, but I, I, I felt in my spirit that somebody needed to hear that word today. So take that word and do something with it, and the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Very quickly, we are concluding the topic we began very clearly about the last days. Surviving the last days, we've handled it. We're looking at understanding God's intention in the last days, we've handled it. And these last days we are talking about today, what is it about? And why did God really plan and intend? We're going to look at the word of God. I want to read first. <laughs> The book of Daniel chapter 8. I'll just pick some scriptures from there. I'll read verse 19, verse 26, 27. Yes, trusting God to give us light into what? He intends for us. Yes, Daniel chapter 8, verse 19 says, And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. This was Daniel receiving the revelation about the days you and I are living. He saw the days of the children of Israel towards the end. He saw the devastations. He saw, in fact, God gave him details. And I, when I looked at this, I discovered that God doesn't just think out something and do. Like us, you can say, oh, I think I have an idea now. That is not our God. And that is why he said his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His plans are higher than our, path, our plans. He said he's so far apart, as far as the heaven is above the earth. So you can't compare, you just can't compare 
care. Our imaginations will beat us if we try to explain. You can't just explain. And this is God. God's intention and look at his plans. He has already planned that something. He has already, you know, we, we didn't just stumble into something. There are things already set in motion. They are all there waiting for the fullness of time. Like we saw in the book of uh, Psalm 139, he said, before all the days that you have lived here on earth, before you live the one, God has already written down the days. My God. He has already written down the days of your life here on earth. Here we see that Daniel was receiving a revelation about what is going to happen when none of those days have come. In fact, towards the end, he said what? Close this thing. Seal it up. This vision is still for a very long time to come. You know, I, I said yesterday that when I discovered that the last days, these last days, and what we have seen that is happening in these last days is not a coincidence, and it's actually not something that the devil is in charge of it, I got excited because I discovered that God have everything planned out he even has his intention regarding all of the things that will be happening the plagues he talked about we have seen some of them and more are still coming yes all that God has said is going to happen you know when I discovered that God is really in charge what do I mean? You mean that God wants all this evil? No. God is pulling the ears of men for the last time. For the last time. And after this, there will be a folding up as we read in the beginning of this week. When we read Matthew 24, where Jesus said, talked about the last days. And the last day. And I said there was a day called the first day. The first day, it was God that created it. God lives in eternity. We're talking about the realm of time, the realm of man. There was a day called the first day, and there will be a day called the last day. And that is the calculation of everything that God has planned to do on earth because of the failure of man. Man became limited. Man, ma man's body became corrupted. And God's mercy is to redeem those who have ears to hear. Jesus cried and said, he that have ears, let him hear. I hope you have ears to hear. To hear the word of God and to study the word of God for yourself. We have said in this, this week that those who really want to survive these last days must not be ignorant. Jesus said take heed that you be not deceived and all of these things we are looking at to conclude is to find out that in all of God's plans he has included these days and if we found ourselves these days that means God has actually placed us here for us to do what he expects us to do not for us to be carried away in the cares of these last days so we see Daniel Receiving the revelation, an angel was showing him something. He said, behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last time. So why is God doing that? Why was God really intending for us to know? Why, why didn't he just, you know, God has something in mind. What he has in mind is that by the time we know and understand why he has allowed these things to be happening, how he could give it to men in the olden days give it to them and the prophecies were recorded and god even in this our days people who never read the, they don't know the scriptures they don't they can't quote scriptures i have met people who don't who cannot quote any part of the scriptures but whom god has given revelations of these last days i'm talking about the destruction of the earth that the bible talked about and they didn't even understand the meaning and then by the time they were like sharing it i began to see that god really really Really, really has left himself without any witness he made sure he has released so that man will be without excuse my prayer is that everyone careful to escape the iniquity in this last days will be able to receive the true word that will preserve them in this if it is these are not the days you live your life as normal as usual these are not the days you take things the way you see them these are the days of carefulness the days that you are supposed to be soaking yourself in prayer the days you're gonna cry out to the lord the days not the days that you know you live your normal life is the days where spells are released 
every single day. But you say, even though I live in this generation, I am standing and I am reflecting the glory of the invisible world that is heaven and that I am not about to give in to the devil. I am trusting the Lord that everyone who is eager to find out what these times have to say and what God is doing, I am praying that they should be able to understand that God has everything under control. That is why the word of God told us there will be plagues. Yes, he said. But none will come near your dwelling. That is why he said, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. So there is a reward of the wicked going on. The Bible says they are receiving the due thing that is fitted for their body, for those who have decided to, to, to live perverse lives, who have decided to live the normal cult of nature, where a man and woman is married, they have decided to go all the way to commit all manner of things that you can't even describe, that is not even to be said. And I tell you, how you live among them and how you survive among them can only be rooted in your knowledge of what God described in this last days and what God expected of you. So yesterday we talked about the fact that God's intention is that all through these plagues, all through the troubles, when the heart of men are filling them because of fear, that God's intention is to draw them and to point them to their internal purpose. We are man was created to bring God pleasure. You know what? God has redeemed our spirit. As we got born again, our soul is being renewed. And this physical body, called the body of humiliation, that's what the Bible calls this body. You know, no matter how beautiful you look, by the time the end of the day comes, no matter your makeup and your dressing, you discover that you, you, you really need a shower, you have sweated and all that. You know, there's nothing you, can, you try to do that will make the body that you do not need a bath. And does, All of those things are the, are the things you see, the limitation of the flesh. But I tell you, the Lord has talked about the redemption of our mortal body because of the corruption and the sin. Are we talking about the deaths? Are we talking about the, the diseases, the sickness? the afflictions, the infirmities. What about the one that is in the mind? When I see mad people on the road, you see people that are losing them. I see people that don't even care. These are situations that God never planned for man. And it doesn't matter the things that may have affected in any area of your life. Maybe you are just okay, but in your mind, you are not fruitful. In the fruit of your body, you may not be fruitful. But I tell you, God's intention is that you are saved and you understand that in this season, he wants you to know that he has the details of what is going on. We are concluding this. So I'm touching several things as we conclude while we trust the Lord to make us understand what he wants us to understand. The Bible says that this angel, I want to just finish reading this. The Bible says verse 26 of uh, um, Daniel 8. He said, and the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true. My God, we are for, we are for shut down of the vision for it shall be for many days. That is a long time to come. He said, Jesus talked about it. He said that thing that Daniel saw. So imagine how many hundreds of years before Jesus came. So we're talking about thousands of years now that have been between the time Daniel talked about. Jesus talked about the last days. He was mentioning this Daniel. He said Daniel spoke about it. When you see this sign and you see this sign, no. Man, no. And if this warning has been given to us all of this while, I believe that it calls for our attention. We're going to ask the Lord to deliver us from ignorance. Deliver us from ignorance. Deliver us from a careless life. Let us learn how to lay hold on our life. Lay hold of our life and trust God to direct our path in the right course. Praise the name of Jesus. And then we are trusting God that anything that is in us, that the devil sees and he knows he can pull us from he can draw. We are talking about surviving those last days. And the kind of, the rate, there is something called the spirit, the spirit of those last days, the spirit of iniquity, the mystery of iniquity. It is working currently upon the children of disobedience, but we are still in a spillover, 
a spillover. A woman was telling me how it was that she, she was just struggling with loss. She's a married Christian woman struggling with loss, as in lost, lost. She would see this man and she would just like, you know, this are a spillover from the mystery of iniquity working on the children of disobedience that is now spilling over upon the children of righteousness how to resist all these spells how to confront it you see how men women that are aged are craving for young men and children even children that are of their age and even younger because they, they it is the spirit of these last days how are we expected to not only survive but prevail that is what we are trusting god for and if you don't understand it know it again that jesus demanded from all that we should not be ignorant he said it clearly and we are trusting him to give us the knowledge that we lack i want you to know that every day there is a release of spells that the enemy knows that this one cannot react to this but she can react to this and they'll begin to release those things your understanding should know that every day you make the man lord i have risen i am going out today i will shine my light i will survive this onslaught of darkness i will go forth in everything I'm doing and I will not be stained. The Bible said, let your garment always be white and your hair lack no oil. That means the oil of the Lord that is flowing on your hair should remain and that your garment should not be stained and as you go forth every day, you should realize that uh, surviving this last days requires you to walk in, the, in understanding and making demand that the spells of each day will not come to you. We want to pray and we want to trust the Lord that anything in you that wants to respond to the whatever the enemy is drawing you from that in the name of Jesus they will be cut off and you trust the Lord you know today is Friday the weekend is here and then we continue our lives like that we are trusting the Lord that, the, that every single day in your life will be fruitful and that no matter what the snares the enemy has placed around your life it will not see the light of day so go ahead and pray and say father I don't only want to exist i want to survive i don't only want to survive i want to thrive i want to fulfill destiny it doesn't matter these times i've been i've been called to live in is a time when men are losing their hold in their integrity i want to remain as a man of integrity i want to remain as a woman of honesty i want to remain as a child of god that have a good testimony that is why it's needed for us to pray as we conclude lord i need to survive this last days i need to triumph in these last days. I don't just want to run around the course. I'm walking here. I'm walking there. I want to make sure that my soul is intact. Go ahead and pray and say, Lord, grant me the grace. Grant me the enablement. And Father, cut me off from those things that are, that are easily drawing me. The things that easily pull me. The things that makes me always to fall back to my vomit. Fall back to where, I, where what, what I'm supposed to stand on. And I'm falling. I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, never again. You know, the Lord can give you the power to stand in the places where you used to fall. Yes. He can give you the power to stand in the places where you have denied him. He can give you the grace to stand in the places where you have disappointed him. And somebody you want to come back home, you have disappointed the Lord by the lifestyle, by lying, by the things you have done. You can say, Lord, today, I really want to come back to you. I really want to ask help from you. Yes. And there are some of you that need to change your circle of friends because they are influencing you. After all, the word of God you will hear. By the time you mingle with them again, you see yourself losing your guard again. You can make up your mind and say, Father, today I receive grace. And as I receive this grace, I will do what is right. And I will not be found in anything that is disobedient, that is, that is dishonoring you. So go ahead and talk to God. Go ahead and pray. We are closing right now. Pray that the Lord will 
give you what it takes to walk out of your old ways or even as a Christian where you stumble, that you stumble no more. You will not be a casualty in these last days. You will not be one whom the enemy will use his life as a specimen. Rather, you will be the one that will stand and resist darkness and shine your light in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace today. Father, Lord, I want to thank you for everyone that have heard us, the word you have placed in our mouth as we have declared it. I ask that they see you and they see what your intention are, the intentions are, and they should be able to see what is expected of them. So right now we want to ask you, Abba Father, to go ahead and be faithful to the word you have given to us in this season, in this new month. Father, we take authority against every work of darkness, every manipulations of wickedness. We lift up our voice in authority and we declare in the mighty name of Jesus, every work of darkness will come against you. Every assignment of hell, we declare you are broken. We declare a brand new season is opened up for the people of God and we declare in this season there shall be joy, there shall be rejoicing, there shall be testimonies released in the name of Jesus. So go ahead and begin to make sure you work according to what God has for you in this month in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a beautiful weekend. In case you are around Greater Accra region, we want to invite you to fellowship with us this Sunday in Dakota Hotel, just opposite at the police station, Tishide, and we'll be expecting you a number so that you can call us, and I trust God that your life can never remain the same again, and for every one of you that are far away from us, make sure you attend church. Make sure you commit yourself. These are evil days. You need the word of God and prayer to be seen. I tell you, in these days, the Lord bless you. The Lord speaks over you. The blood of Jesus is speaking over you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's the Lion of Judah. Thank you, Lord. We bow down. We bow down. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Be exalted, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus.